Special thanks to Casey Smith for editing this script. This video is dedicated to viewers like you. Thank you! Nature has a fun way of diversifying her creations, from the mighty T-Rex to deer-like creatures that would eventually become whales. Back then, there were dinosaurs taller than skyscrapers, saber-toothed cats with vicious teeth and claws, and sloths that swam in the ocean. When we look at the limitless fossil discoveries, it's hard not to believe that these creatures are the result of God drinking too much Jesus juice and treating the planet Earth like his own personal Sims playthrough. It kind of makes you wonder, what if they existed today? Could you handle having a triceratops as a pet? Or how about a short-faced bear? Well, today we're going to focus on some of the wackiest and wild prehistoric creatures that ever walked the Earth. Number 10. Ammonites Ammonites were marine animals that were closely related to squids, cuttlefish, and octopi. The earliest species appeared during the Devonian period, and the last of their kind vanished with the dinosaurs in the late Cretaceous period. What made them so OP was their rapid evolution and widespread distribution, allowing them to free swim the waters for over 343 million years. To put that into perspective, they've endured three huge extinction events and still did their own thing. Their most recognizable feature are their diverse shells, which range from ice cream cone, to ram's horn, to eldritch monstrosity. They most likely use jet propulsion, expelling water through a funnel-type opening to propel themselves like moderate-day cephalopods. In terms of their size, they range from a size of a penny to four foot in diameter. The largest ammonite found so far is Parapuposa separandensis. This animal crossing dream come true is 6.5 feet in diameter and its living mass is suggested to be 3,208 pounds. I definitely like to see a dentist try and fit that in their fish tank. Number 9. Radiodonta. The Radiodonta are ancient arthropods that lived large during the Cambrian period. Just like the Ammonite, their diversity allowed the creepy crawlies to take charge of the Cambrian. Some were filter feeders, while others were ferocious predators. They used their flaps to glide effortlessly through the ocean. The ventral flaps would propel them, while the dorsal flaps would help them with steering and stabilization. Their most notable features are their heads, their eyes, and their frontal appendages. For some species, their claws were used like limbs, allowing them to grab onto prey while their oro cone, aka the mouth, did the crushing. As for the eyes, they differentiated based on the radiodonta in question. For example, Nomalocaris had compound eyes that had 16,000 lenses. This gave it sharp vision and the ability to see in color. I wonder if it can see into the future. Hey Steve, how's life? I got a life force! This is a human! This is what we look like! This is what we act like! This is what everybody was like before us! This is what I am! I'm a throwback! I'm here! I've got the fire of human liberty! I'm setting fires everywhere! And humans are turning on everywhere! Hi, welcome to Chili's. I... I've seen some stuff, man. Horrible things. There was smoke and fire, and the internet? Like, what the heck is the internet? Steve, I, I, I think you need to calm down. You weren't there, man! You weren't there. As for their size, they range from being the size of a coin to the size of your house cat. The biggest of them all will be Agriochisis, a filter feeder that is 6 feet in length. That's bigger than a pit bull. Number 8. Glyptodons. Glyptodons are what you get when defense becomes a good offense. Like their modern relative, the armadillo, their body armor protected them. Each species had a unique set of ostroderms, protecting their head, body, and tail. Because predators valued keeping their teeth, they strode through the Miocene and Pliocene with no issue. Living in North and South America, they were grazers grown to the size of automobiles, with the largest weighing up to two tons. The most famous glyptodont of this group is Didacurus, a creature that is known for its club tail, smacking around predators wildly due to its lack of vision. Now, you're probably wondering how could this thing be a pet? Personally, I'm shocked that you would even question that. You mean to tell me that you wouldn't have a Volkswagen-sized two-ton danger dillo as a guard animal 
and watch in horror as it smashes everything in your house because it's smart as a stale potato chip? Now that I think of it, it's probably an outside animal. Number 7. Temnospondyli. During their 210 million years of evolutionary workload, these proto-amphibians became some of the most productive organisms to roam to Earth. In fact, they became serious game changers when they were some of the first vertebrates to fully adapt to life on land. Many species existed worldwide during multiple time periods, adapting to land and water. Some temnospondyli were small and looked like salamanders. Others were massive, showing an odd resemblance to crocodiles. In fact, one might say that the crocodile sort of plagiarized the Temnospondyli's game plan, but you didn't hear it from me. In terms of their anatomy, their skulls are massive and hosted a variety of advancements, such as a system that could detect movement underwater, and teeth for grabbing prey. The title for the biggest Temnospondyli is Prinosuchus, which is estimated to be 30 foot long and weighing 2 tons. Number 6. Joseph Artigasia Joseph Artigasia is the largest rodent known, living from 4 to 2 million years ago in South America. When we talk about size, we're talking about a critter that's big as a cow, weighing a single ton. It may have lived in a forest environment, eating soft vegetation. Its closest living relative is the capybara, and based on speculation, we probably assume that this giant rat either lives solitary or probably forms social groups. Either way, this would make any pest exterminator regret their career choice. You know. The world can be a tough place. The world is on fire, there's nothing to do, and you're poor. But say, what if I told you there is a special little guy that can change the way you look at life? Introducing the Tully Monster! Homegrown in the exotic land of Illinois, the Tully Monster is an 8 inch long evolutionary monstrosity guaranteed to provide customer satisfaction. Need a traveling partner? Tully Monster. Going to get married but need a best man? Tully Monster. Got finals tomorrow and you're looking for a study buddy? Tully monster. Is it a vertebrate or an invertebrate? Is it a worm or a bug? The answer, my friend, is yes. I've been a customer of the Tully monster for five years now. It has helped my life in more ways than I could ever imagine. Uh, me and my wife had an argument uh, at one point and thanks to the Tully monster, we've been able to reconcile our differences and be able to live happily as husband and wife. Uh, frankly, I couldn't be happier, and her boyfriend was definitely ecstatic when he heard the news. The Tully Monster. Get it today. Tully Monster is not for human consumption. It is not responsible if you've fallen and can't get up. We don't condone any Tully Monster related incidents, but we do find them hilarious. The customer must take full responsibility for everything and anything that could and or does go wrong. Number 5. Oscar Raptor. If it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it's most likely a Hauskaraptor. You would think that the name would belong to a dangerous dinosaur, but research suggests it was a waterfowl-like dromaeosaurid. It spent most of its time in land and water during the Cretaceous period. Its biological characteristics include strong hind limbs for running and small flipper-like forelimbs for swimming. Researchers also found sharp, backward curving teeth and sensory neurons in its mouth. This would have allowed Hauskaraptor to detect vibrations in the water. To add on to the cuteness factor, it was 60 centimeters in length, roughly the size of a mallet duck. When it was discovered, paleontologists went daffy for this duck, and with good reason. This unexpected fossil represented the diversity of dinosaurs, and their transition from big and tough to small and adaptable. Dinosaurs were always seen as big and lumbering, and for them to only survive was to keep it that way. However, seeing more discoveries like Hauskaraptor give us the idea that one of the many secrets to an organism's success is adaptation. It may not have been the biggest bully around, but it was certainly a special discovery. Like Charles Darwin always said, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Number 4. Prehistoric Birds of the Cenozoic Era After the dinosaurs were gone, the prehistoric birds balled out during the Cenozoic. This caused all sorts of chaos for mammals in Australia, the Americas, and New Zealand. Most of them were thick boys with small wings, powerful legs, and massive beaks. The peaceful ones included Apiornis, an elephant bird that was 9 feet tall and weighed up to 1,200 pounds. An honorable mention goes to Australia's very own Bullockornis, aka the Demon Duck of Doom. This 6 foot tall bird is known as a massive member of Australia's prehistoric megafauna and the lead vocalist of a very metal band. 
Meanwhile, on the wrong side of the tracks, Calican was a fast, ten foot tall terror bird, gifted with a skull that was 28 inches long, the largest head of any known bird in existence. Argentavis and Pelagornis were the largest flying birds to ever exist, armed with massive wings that would allow it to soar in the skies like a biplane. If I were to pick between the two as a pet, I'd probably go with the one without teeth. Speaking of teeth, number three, Borophagine. If you ever felt bad about your dog destroying your furniture while you were out, there once was a time where bone-crushing dogs called the shots for 33.5 million years in North America. An extinct species of dogs, called the Borophagine, went from raccoon-sized omnivores to powerful carnivores the size of bears. Archaeocyon was the earliest known Borophagine and spent most of its time as an opportunistic eater. Eventually, it would evolve to become a bigger bone crusher, complete with stout teeth, massive cheek teeth, and powerful jaws. This, in turn, would help it crack open the bones of its prey. One of the most famous bone crushers is Epicyon, who would go on to have a massive head, weigh around 300 pounds, and reach 5 feet in length. However, this would be their end. Modern canines were slender marathon runners, outcompeting the bigger, heavier, and slower bone crushers. Not to mention big cats were beginning to join into the evolutionary race, outpacing the competition with their own skills as predators. Still, I'd like to think that having a 300 pound dog would be an excellent lap dog. Except for the fur, and the teeth, and the dog mess. Let's just go on to number two. Number two, Carboniferous Era Bugs. During the time of the Carboniferous Era, plant growth was out of this world. Huge forests hosted ferns, mosses, and giant trees that dominated the planet, caused by greater oxygen level in the atmosphere compared to today. This helped the Carboniferous bugs in the best of ways. Like modern day bugs, they had spiracles instead of lungs. Those spiracles would pump oxygen into the trachea and then allow the insects to breathe and grow. Add all of this together and then you have giant dragonflies the size of birds centipedes that are tall as a grown man, and 28 inch long scorpions. Personally, my favorite is Arthoplora, an 8 foot long critter that spent most of its time just having a good time and eating veggies. If that doesn't make your skin crawl, dig this. Scientists have discovered that by raising bugs in oxygen rich areas, generations can go bigger and faster. While it does suck to know that we'll never get to experience the Shaquille O'Neal of bugs, we should think of it this way. Would you rather have 10 quintillion small bugs or 10 quintillion bugs the size of your dog? Number 1. Proboscideans The ancestors of today's elephants were some of the biggest and oddest creatures ever to walk to earth since the time of the dinosaurs. Like all mammals of the past, the elephant family, or proboscideans, started off small before going on the wild roller coaster that is evolution. So far, over 180 extinct members have been discovered in every continent apart from Australia and Antarctica. Thanks to the high rate of speciation, the proboscideans were able to dominate and experience different evolutionary trends. For instance, woolly mammoths specialized in keeping warm during winters, thanks to their ability to store fat, a thick winter coat, and a feature that helped improve oxygen delivery around the body to prevent freezing. Another example would be platybelodon a very special creature that eats its shovel tusks to strip bark from trees in swamps, lakes, and rivers. Finally, we have Paleoloxodon nemenicus, which could possibly be the biggest land animal to ever walk to earth at 17.1 feet tall and 23.4 tons. It specialized in being a very big boy, requiring massive amounts of food to support its metabolism. Other than the gigantic size, it's known for its gigantic string tusk and robust skull crest. When you're that big and tough, no one can really mess with you. However, not all proboscideans were big enough to break the scales. For instance, the dwarf elephants of the Mediterranean Sea decided to switch sizes in a response to limited resources. This is what we call island dwarfism, which is still applied today in some modern day animals. If you look closely at their skulls, you can definitely see why the Greeks interpreted them as cyclopses. For you, the audience, these creatures are either frightening or downright adorable. The fun part about science is, it leaves us with a realm of possibilities. How different could our lives be if we got to hug a giant dog? Would we ever see salamanders the size of a professional basketball player in our lifetime? Probably not, but one thing we can all agree on is that we'll never take our cats and dogs for granted.